so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Last night was wow. I, I think I died three times watching that game last night. It was insane with the ending and everything else. And... <laughs> Just like on cue, C.D. Lamb having one incredible season, a record-breaking season for the Dallas Cowboys, passing Michael Irvin's in single-season receptions and yards. And we're talking about passing a Hall of Famer. The NFL wasted no time, and I mean zero time. They immediately drug-tested let me say again, they drug tested C.D. Lamb to make sure that there's nothing there. You know how it is. You have been selected by the NFL drug testing pro uh, program, independent. You have been, oh, no, excuse me, administration. So, oh, sorry, I'm looking at it real, real small. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's put on the glasses. You have been selected by the NFL Drug Testing Program Independent Administrator to complete a performance-enhancing substance test today. Please report to the drug testing area ASAP to meet with the Dope Control Office. Why do they got to call them Dope Control? Um, and discuss the testing process, timelines for completing your test, and to address any questions you may have. If you feel you are not prepared to provide an adequate specimen, you should still check in with the DCO, valid government issued or team issued photo identification is required. So immediately after the game, CD Lamb was tested for drugs. Okay, so there's that. Um, last night, I'm going to say that that game was one of those ones. And this is what I say. This is what I've said forever. Winning a Super Bowl is hard. I know people are going to laugh when I say, ha, ha, you're, you're talking about Super Bowl. Your team is garbage. Well, that, you, you, that, that's your opinion. But in the NFL, games are hard to win. It doesn't matter how good you are. You can look and see teams like San Francisco that have had a three-game lose streak. Okay, yeah, you've seen teams like the Eagles that are on had a three game lose streak. The Cowboys had a two game lose streak. You've seen the Detroit Lions up and down and Detroit Lions are considered a good team. They've won their division. And for the Cowboys, it was a dogfight. The reality is the Cowboys, had they not made mistakes, the Dak Prescott interception when they were driving down there, they should have at least gotten three. The C.D. Lamb fumble that went out of the end zone, you know, they left at least 10 points on the board. At least 10. And Mike McCarthy, with his play calling, um, in the end, where he left them enough time to go down the field. Um, quite frankly, I guess Mike McCarthy is probably happy today because of the way this thing ended, takes the focus away from his clock management, something that has been an issue all along. Here's my take on this whole thing. As I'm looking at this, okay, follow me if you will. Now, you, you know they're going to be killing and basically saying the Cowboys cheated or the Cowboys were gifted or it was stripped it. Here's my take on this. Between the players that were out there, it felt like what the Lions were trying to do, because to understand this, um, they called it illegal touching. Um, but when I think of illegal, that's why I kept going, like, what are they talking about, illegal touching? Illegal touching to me is you get run out of bounds on a kickoff return. And then you're the guy who ends up being the first one to touch the football. You have to reestablish yourself, and you can't be the first one. That's illegal touching in my mind. Um, I, to me, it was an eligible person basically catching the football, which was an offensive lineman. 
But if you looked at how that was set up, you had two linemen there together. One is saying, I'm reporting as eligible. And you had the other guy who was running in kind of behind him, kind of covert, who was saying, I'm there as well. I think what the Lions were trying to do, because uh, what you have to understand is, if you are a lineman with a lineman number to catch the football, you have to report and say, hey, I know my number is an offensive line number, but I'm going to be playing a position to catch the football. And that official has to notify the defense that that player is eligible to catch a pass. You understand what I'm saying? So that way the defense knows he is a lineman, but he is also an eligible receiver to catch the football. It seemed like what the Lions were doing, having the three linemen there together and the one kind of slipping in there at the last second, was to confuse the Cowboys. So the, the official would come over and say, you know, 68 and 70 or whoever is eligible, but the Cowboys in this last second as we're getting through here and trying to go, don't know for sure which guy. You know, you hear a couple of numbers and now you're looking and, and, and before you know it, the play snapped in there, it, you get a win. The Lions were trying to confuse the Cowboys. Unfortunately for the Lions, they probably said, I'm eligible, but the official did not get it. He missed it because they were trying to confuse the defense. In the end, they confused the officials. It happens. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or however you want to look at it, an NFL season is made up of wins and losses. And it's not enough just to be a great team. You'll lose as a great team. Just because sometimes the ball bounces the wrong way. Sometimes a call goes the wrong way. Sometimes things are missed. Sometimes players are injured. But last night was one of those games that typically the Cowboys are always on the short st end of the stick. When you think about the games like the catch-no-catch, no catch, where, yeah, it looks like a catch. It should have been a catch. It ends up not being a catch, and we lose the game, and then they change the rule. Much like the C.D. Lamb, had the Cowboys lost the game, we would have been revisiting the fumble that went out of the end zone. In the same way, the Minnesota Vikings playing against the Eagles had the same exact thing happen where Justin Jefferson fumbled on the one-yard line and it goes out of bounds in the end zone and it ends up being the Eagles' ball. The Eagles win by one score and you can say, had they gotten that play, that maybe they ended up not winning that game. Which changes everything. Because had Minnesota which was playing lights out, won that game, we would be pretty much shoot in as the winner of the division. And unfortunately, that happens in football. I want to listen to Ryan Clark's. I was kind of listening to it a little bit last night, but I was tired and in a daze. His explanation of this. Now, you know that everybody's going to say that, you know, the official was wrong, that the Lions got screwed. Lions, okay. They've already won their division. They're, they're going to have a home playoff game. It definitely hurts them as far as having an opportunity to get the number one seed. Um, it helps the Eagles, of course, because if the Eagles can win out, then they've got the number two seed. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Like I said, Cowboys, we've been on that side of the stick many times. This was a fun day of work. Yeah. Five o'clock alongside. As I mentioned when, when Troy and Joe and John were on with us, in the studio as we're watching that last Lions drive, you say to me, if they score, they go for two. We both were sure they would, yeah. right? You like that call? I love that call. When you look at, look at Dan Campbell, this is who he's been all season. He's believed in his team. He's gone for the win. And also, this is the team that's already clinched the yeah. NFC North. They know they're going to host at least one playoff game. Why not go out and get a statement win? Why not go out and show your team that you believe in them in any situation, any scenario, and they almost pulled it off, if not for a call made by the official? He was furious at the, at the presser. And he I, ain't the one I want mad at me either. No, that's a big, that's a big man. And, and, and I thought he might just bust the thing up. And I get the anger because I, and John Perry explaining to me 
and to our audience that it's on Taylor Decker to be more demonstrative and talking to Brad Allen. Like, aren't you trying to do that on the low? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're definitely trying to do it on the low. You don't want to draw attention to yeah. yourself. And he's going to go over to the defense and announce it anyway. Right. And so... Taylor Decker, as a left tackle, is not walking over to the lead official for any reason other than to argue a call or to report as eligible. Mm -hmm. And it seems that he's doing that. Maybe, I don't know if Detroit's plan is, we'll run Skipper onto the field and maybe it's a diversion for the defense and go. they don't recognize who's eligible, who's not. That. But I watch Taylor Decker walk over to him. I watch him try to have the conversation about being an eligible player. And the other piece is this, if they can't hear the official tell the defense who's reported as eligible. Now Taylor Decker doesn't know to go make to go make it clear to him. You understand what I'm saying? Like if, if he announces it over the mic or if he lets both sides of the football know who's reported eligible, now Taylor Decker can make the adjustment. To Taylor Decker, I've walked over, I've talked to him already, he knows what's going on, uh -huh. I'm ready to catch this. Let me back this up Walked for a over, let me, let me I've talked right to him. There. So you see, okay, now listen. 58, 58 isn't one of the ones that's trying to be made eligible. 58's not. And then you have the other guy, 70, come run on through. So now you got three offensive linemen that are huddling up with the official to try and basically get there together. You know, if one guy runs over and says, I'm eligible, and the official comes over, you know to follow that guy. But they got three guys there. It's kind of like the, 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 the shell game. You know, you put the ball in one shell and you move it around and, and you're trying to confuse people. Well, the Lions got caught in the shell game, but go on. Him already. He knows what's going on. Uh -huh. I'm ready to catch this football for the touchdown. You know what I thought was wild is after that penalty, they got backed up. They could have then kicked the extra. They could have then kicked the extra point if they just if they chose to. They didn't. Then Parsons is offside. So they get a chance to run it back again yeah. and, and they just aren't able to execute. So in the end. As we work our way backwards from the call and the flag that takes it off the field, the only reason they've even got that time yeah. is because Dallas, after a two-minute warning where there was Screwed a penalty the that backs Dallas up and Detroit's only got two timeouts, they threw the ball three yeah. times. I, mean, I this, couldn't believe that. This isn't the first time clock management has reared its ugly head in the Mike McCarthy era for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And I understand he's trying to be aggressive. He's trying to get an opportunity to get better field position or get the first down. Right. But you have a kicker who's been amazing throughout the entire season. Mm -hmm. You have a guy who's made, who's got opportunities to make field goals and it can make them for as deep as 60 yards. You don't have to be in a rush there. You don't have to throw the football. Why not make sure you waste as much time as you possibly can? This was the Especially one. The second and 14 throw was the one that I was just really baffled by. Right, but, well, because yeah, that because was it's too. the incompletion that stops the clock. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb yeah. made every single play tonight. Yeah. Why wouldn't you give him the opportunity and think players over plays? Yeah. Mike McCarthy has done this too many times with the Dallas Cowboys and mm -hmm. not for that last call, Scott, we're having a different conversation. No doubt. And there's a whole lot baked into this result. This call, that call, decisions. I think McCarthy, this is me speaking, I think so, I think he wears a convenient target and, and, and yes. a lot of people fire at that and say he makes a lot of mistakes. I think calls like this invite it. Does it concern you looking towards the playoffs? It, it this does, guy it, might make a critical mistake. It, it does concern me because it hasn't changed. Yeah, We've seen fair. this in very critical moments and crucial moments for this team mm -hmm. come up not only in the regular season, Scott, we've also seen it in the playoffs going as far back as the wild card game against the San Francisco 49ers a few years ago at AT&T Stadium. He has to be more dialed in in these moments, and I don't know if being the actual play caller allows him to do that and delegate, and delegate that as well as he needs to either. We got to go, but I want to ask you this last one quickly. Am I nuts to say that I leave this game almost a little bit more impressed with Detroit? If no, it, you're, you're not, not for a 92-yard pass on a sack that should have happened but didn't, and then they roll the dice and come up short. Like, they, they left there with Scott, I, I think what's going to happen is you're going to look at the final score mm -hmm. and forget that if not for a hellified play by Dak Prescott in the pocket that gets the football to CeeDee Lamb for a 92-yard touchdown, yeah. what Dan Campbell says about this defense is right. They do play well. Aiden Hutchinson does come up with a big play. And you actually find a way to score within the rules and an official makes a mistake. The Detroit Detroit Lions are going to feel good about themselves. You played a team that was absolutely phenomenal at home and should have walked away with a win.
Tough one to swallow if you're Dan Campbell. I understand why he was looking for a place to put that gun hey, he and wadded <laughs> it up in the paper. All right, so that's their take on it. Now, I'm going to say, you know, it's just, it's, it, this, this goes back to the whole thing with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott made an incredible play. Dak Prescott, who has done plays like that before where he's gotten away from the sack and found ways much t- like Tony Romo would, Instead of looking at it and saying Dak Prescott played out of his mind, or the fact that the Cowboys let the Lions stay in this game, let's be clear here. The Cowboys were moving the ball almost at will early in this game. And had it not been, again, they went, I believe, from the, I want to say, the 11 yard line. All the way down to the one. If the Cowboys end up getting that touchdown where CeeDee Lamb fumbles it, and you can say, well, you know, he did fumble it. Yeah, well, guess what? You ended up not completing. You ended up screwing up on the play. There's mistakes happening on both sides of it. But instead of saying that the Cowboys offense, because the Cowboys offense moved the ball, they just didn't deliver in the end. You got two teams that were fighting, that were good teams, that are playoff teams. And, you know, the controversy won't end. I know that. But it's okay. Because in the end, what happens is the Dallas Cowboys now have 11 wins. And now the Philadelphia Eagles have a little more pressure going against the Cardinals. All right, good people. We will be uh, live streaming today, of course, because that's what we do. And uh, I can't wait to get this party started. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of work here at the Red Brick House beforehand, and then we going to do it. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I'll see you soon.